pictures. What policies are you going to put in place to ensure that these students or learners from Asal areas are not disadvantaged in terms of education? My second question, uh, there have been recent research and it has been noted that there's quite a number of girls dropping from school due to early pregnancies. What measures are you going to put in place to ensure that these girls are given a second chance to learn and they're not expelled from school until they are ready to give birth. And after giving birth and having maternity, they can be reinstated back to the school so that they finish their education. I thank you, Honorable Chairman. Mukami, uh, Amisi, Caleb. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, I just want to know uh, the nominee, what your views on the continuous delay of the disbursement of help loan, it has become a thorn in the flesh. Most uh, university students are on the streets on the same. And also the arbitral increase in the university fees uh, that is now making education look like a privilege rather than uh, um, it's supposed to be for everyone. Then lastly, speaker, uh, the late Dr. Griffin, uh, the former uh, founder of Starry Boy Center where I schooled, once told us that if you are given a glass or a coffee cup, you wash it. Wash it as if there's no any other coffee cup that has been washed before. And uh, the nominee, you are going to a very sensitive ministry. We've heard all these stories now and before on how you expect to do education to me is like an economic necessity to this country. It's a major pillar of any nation. And uh, Honorable Speaker, from even the elementary to secondary to the university, if you look at the ASEAN countries, the de development parts of Singapore, South Korea, Japan, it mostly was on education. They streamlined the education sector. When you report to office upon approval, if in case you are approved, what is this radical measures you are going to introduce in that ministry? What is this miracle? How are you going to perform the miracle and what are the paraphernalia of this miracle? Because we need to, to see, we need, we, we, we've been hearing this story, so what is this that you are going to see in the Ministry of Education for once, when it, maybe in a hundred days of your, your service to that ministry? Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Uh, to Honorable Mish's uh, question on the Northeastern um, teachers refusing to go because of insecurity, this is, has been a teething and thorny problem uh, for TSC. And um, the only way this can be done is if we work together with the Ministry of Interior to come up with the um, parameters and, and, and um, strategies to ensure that um, um, the teachers are secured. And one of those would be perhaps coming up with um, low-cost boarding schools so that the student can um, be studying in one place that can be easily secured. On the question of girls' pregnancy, the ministry's policy is that they are not supposed to be sent away and they are supposed to be given a chance to come back and continue with their studies. Uh, we, they, we don't have a, a, a policy where if they become pregnant, then they, that's the end of their life. That changed. It was there before, but it, was, it has since um, changed. To Honorable Amis's uh, question on the continuous delay on help loans, this, again, is a problem of uh, the, the resources uh, being released on time and the issue relating to the collections of those who have already uh, gone before. I, I understand that uh, there is um, a study that is going on to find out whether help can uh, come up with a bond to ensure that they have enough resources to cover the students so that we avoid this problem. On the issue of the increase on fees, the, I understand the school, f the, the fees has not increased for the programs. What has happened is that before, the program's cost was not being indicated. Now with the new funding model, uh, the program amount is being indicated and 
the parents are thinking the fees has been increased from what was being given as capitation. So the fees, as I understand, is are not increased. And and uh, what would happen is um, under the new funding model, the student is still getting funded through the scholarship and help as uh, to, to ensure that they are not paying more than they were supposed to be paying before. On the question of Mr. what I would do. Excuse me, Mr. Nominee. You know, when you said that the money being indicated as school fees is the actual cost as costed by the ministry. But when a parent in the village receives a school fees, I mean, invitation admission letter that has 350,000, 450,000, can you imagine the panic you're causing across the country? It is careless and not strategic. This is how people, you build anger in the country. So they should, the letter should just have the exact cost per household cost, not the full amount, because the rest is being covered by the Higher Education Fund and Help. So I hope you're going to change that, if you're confirmed. Thank you. Thank you, madam. Sorry, sorry to interrupt. Uh, maybe uh, Mr. Migosi could also tell us, in relation to that university uh, the funding, what would be your view on the funding using public resources of students who are in private universities well across the country we have universities and campuses that are almost closing down because they don't have students being sent to them by coops uh, or the kenya colleges and universities placement services speaker allow yes. me briefly uh, on the same issue on the university funding model, the students, you, you have to have a criteria on determining who is the most vulnerable or poor. And what we have seen is that you have a category of children of single parents and a category of children who are orphans. And you give different, you know, you, what measures will be put in place to ensure that you actually get the most vulnerable in the community and not disadvantage them in the new university funding model? Yes. Thank you, thank you, Honorable Speaker. Finish the other round. Then yes, come I, to I was this. going to You're going the, to the issue of the miracle uh, that I would do in 100 days. There is no miracle that I'm going to perform. That there is a problem in the sector and is a problem that needs to be faced head on. So there'll be discussions on what do we do to solve those problems and I'll not be able to do it alone. But I will offer leadership and hold discussions and consultations with each and everybody who is involved in the sector. For example, with respect to not having enough classes so that the children can be in school, the year nine children can be in school in January, is an immediate problem. So that's a problem that takes priority that we need to look at and solve. So I can't mm -hmm. sit here and say I have a miracle solution to all the problems that are there, but what I can do is say I'm ready and willing and able to offer leadership to get the kind of solutions that are required in the sector. Uh, order, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, <laughs> I didn't say miracle in literal terms. Um, you know, Honorable Speaker, when you stand to be a president of Kenya, you know what ails the country. You tell the people, this is a problem of this nation. This is what I want to solve. That's what I need to hear from the nominee. This is a problem of the Ministry of Education. This is how I intended to solve. You can't say, I will get there and consult. What are you consulting on? On what? Because yes. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Honorable. What I can say is the challenge, as I said earlier, is a question of funding. So when I get to office, if you sit uh, fit to um, approve my nomination, I see a solution in this way in the monies that we are giving to the education sector, which is 27% of the budget, is this fund being used for the purpose for which it was meant? The UNESCO recommendation is that any country should spend not more than 20% of its budget in education. 
So we are spending 27. We are already above by 7%. It is not going to be possible to get probably more funding from the central government. You know, so the solution you are must told be the yes. by Emase and somebody else. Duplex applications of public resources. Yes. Take the issue of bursaries. The MCA is giving bursary. The member of parliament is giving bursary. The women rep is giving bursary. The governor is giving bursary. Your ministry is giving bursary. Banks are giving scholarships and many other organizations. Apart from the banks, all the others are drawing money from the same source. And sometimes you find fraudulent activities where one child gets a bursary from each of those giving bursaries. How are you going to reform the bursary scheme that will largely contribute in saving probably even 10 billion shillings? Uh, yes, uh, Chair. Chair uh, we also have TVET and also the technical schools doing the same thing. Yes, yes, I do. I do. Um, so, 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 as I had indicated earlier, because we've not done an audit of how many amounts of how much money is being used for this particular sector, that is the first thing I would commission an audit to find out how much money is out here for the. I do, I do, Mr. Chairman. Yes. I, you are I, asked by Jeanette. Yes, yes I'm, I'm going You there. know what you are walking into. Yes, I <laughs> understand that, um, I understand that there are cartels and other people, but we come at this time, at a critical time when there is a crisis. Using this crisis, it is very possible to dismantle the cartels because with the support, the political support, the parliamentary support, and the support from the public, if we say today that we know you've been doing the wrong thing, we will report you. Somebody would think twice before they continue with what they are doing. So I would use this crisis to dismantle the cartels that exist uh, there. But on the issue of uh, private universities that uh, Mweshmiwa Ichungwa asked, what the, private, the students who are going to private universities are getting is the loan facet, not the scholarship. So, and, and this is um, born out of the contention that um, the parents have chosen to take their uh, children to private universities. They should be able to, to, fund, to fund that. So they are getting the loan portion of the, 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 the funding, not the scholarship uh, portion. That is under the new funding model. Yes, that is under the new funding they model. Are ongoing, they are students who are ongoing under the old DUC system. Yes, they are, the ongoing students under the DUC the system are still getting the capitation. And speaking as an advocate, I think once you give somebody a right, if you start taking it in the middle, it becomes a bit, a bit bad. So I'm thinking that maybe... Uh, My question was, <laughs> what's your opinion continue? on funding, using public resources to fund students in private universities, I, I have rather even uh, uh, start from placement. Yes. Why do we have to place students in private universities while we have not filled up all the uh, vacancies we have in public uh, universities, built on public resources, uh, or reeling in huge debt because uh, they don't have adequate uh, resources since they don't have students? Would if, if approved, would you push uh, COOPs to send more students to private or to public universities, irrespective of whether it's just because even the loan element is public resources? Yes. Um, what I think can be done is to review the policy that is in place. Find out how did that policy come to be because it's the on ongoing. The one for the new uh, funding model has changed, but the previous one on capitation was a policy that was in place and was going on. So, and then we can do up the math and find out if it's just maybe two years that are remaining or three, but it's not something that I can speak to 
at the moment. It is something that perhaps that I need to do more uh, research on in order to be able to come to uh, an informed decision. Yes. Madam Lesuda's question on how do we determine who is the most vulnerable? The tool that is used is called the means um, testing instrument that has eight parameters. We think that those parameters are not comprehensive enough because it does not identify and they are not linked sufficiently to determine what the incomes of those parents are. So what we think is that it needs to be expanded and linked because what has happened is you would find the rich not feeling the proper figures and the poor because sometimes of um, uh, um, lack of knowledge they do not put in the right the right information so we need to come up with a tool akin to the psychometric test where you can put so many answers but at the end you get the correct result because i'll be more comfortable if you say if confirmed i if will confirmed, come up yes. with a tool if confirmed no? <laughs> i'm sorry yes. i'm sorry the, mr chairman i'm yeah. sorry if I, confirmed thank you uh, yes, chairman because you are going to give policy direction yes. to the ministry yes thank if confirmed yes so when uh, okay yes thank you chairman sure. but I, as uh, i will not talk again but i wanted to just say to the nominee if, you're, uh, if you get this opportunity to serve Kenyans in that docket, because I've listened to you carefully, and you keep talking about money, money. All your solutions seem to be around having a budget. I want to assure you that as a parliament, we are just about to pass a very rationalized budget, where budget cuts are across the whole, uh, uh, all the ministries. So that's all I wanted to say. Yes, Migosi, I think we'll end there. There are some uh, Kenyans sending in messages. Many you have answered. One says, ensure TVET students get their certificates from their colleges within a month of graduating. Uh, the domicile.